Hello everybody, today we're all going to have a look into the wild and wonderful world of pop vocal chains. Um, if you want a video specifically for beginners on this, uh, just let me know down in the comments because this isn't... Because this is going to be not advanced or intermediate, but it is going to use some specific plugins that don't just come as standard with your DAW. There's going to be some UAD, some Fab Filter, um, and, and probably a bunch of others as well. So if you don't have those plugins, don't worry, you can still use the stock plugins in exactly the same way to the same effect. But I am going to be talking about the, the plugins that I specifically use in this video. And I am going to give you my vocal chain that I use on all my tracks in some form. So I think actually a lot of producers and songwriters are really protective over their vocal chain because it's quite a personal thing. Um, and I think that's the thing to really, really remember from the off here. What I tell you in this video isn't going to be a perfect fit for your voice, for your performance style, for your microphone, etc, etc, etc. For example, the vocal chain I'm using to record this video is different from the vocal chain I'd use to record someone singing in a, in a booth, you know, it's totally different. So don't worry if at the end of this video you're like, I disagree with everything he said. That's completely fine, that's just my way of doing it. I like the way my vocals sound and you like the way your vocals sound, that's cool. But hopefully the techniques we use are going to be educational and hopefully you'll go away from this maybe with one or two ideas that you hadn't thought of yet. Just before we start, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please click the subscribe button down there. It really helps me out because I know what kind of videos to make for what people and like what demographic I'm working with here. And it means that you're gonna get better videos. Uh, and also I'm doing three videos a week at the minute. So there's so much content going live, um, which will hopefully be really useful for you. Anyway, 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 what is a vocal chain? I've said it about 50 times. What, what actually is it? What are we talking about here? A vocal chain is a string of plugins that we specifically use in an order on a vocal. I don't really know why we call it a vocal chain. I guess you're chaining effects together in, in like a series. Um, but yeah, it's just the processing that we put on the singer's voice in a pop song. The reason we need vocal chains and vocal processing is the same as we process any other instrument. I think the reason it's more, I think the reason it's more talked about and more important potentially is that in most styles of music, the vocals are at the front. They are the most important element of the song. And so you need them to be the crispest, the loudest, the most clear. I personally love to use third party plugins when I'm producing. Um, there's no need for that. The, the stock plugins that come with Ableton, Logic, even GarageBand, Reaper, they're all really good these days. In terms of third party recommendations, the ones that I talk about in this video are the ones that I mostly use, but there are others, including the XLA3 Opticon, which you'll hear me talk about in a lot of my videos. I really love that. And a bunch of the UAD stuff as well. So yeah, there's loads to check out. It's a massive money pit. So if you've just got stock, don't worry, stick with stock. My vocal chain changes with every artist I write and record with, but there's some key components which you should include in your chain for absolute definite. So first, we're gonna have an EQ this is usually to remove the low end, but you can also do some subtle cleanup here just so you don't overload your compressors and like amplify signals that you don't want there. Next, we're going to compress the vocal. Usually with two compressors, it's going to be like a few stages of compression. But if you just have one, maybe that's how you prefer it. But we're definitely going to want to do some compression after that EQ. Next, we're going to de-s the vocal. De-sing is the practice or the tool that we use to sort of remove the harshness of S's and T's in recording. So microphones tend to emphasize these like sibilant sounds. So we use DS's to reduce the harshness, I suppose. And then finally, I'd suggest you use another EQ. This is more your stylistic EQ. This is where you bump the top and you like boost some of the low end to taste. It's, it's more a creative choice at this point rather than a surgical EQ that you were gonna use at the beginning. That's what I'd recommend anyway, as I say, personal choice. So now we get into what is my vocal chain? How do I process vocals? One thing to bear in mind after I show you this is I'm gonna turn all my buses off and a big part of the vocal sound in pop recordings is the reverbs, the delays, the parallel compression and all the other processing that goes on. What I'm gonna talk about today is just the vocal chain itself. Just just the effects I have actually on the lead vocal. And we're gonna start off with the interface I use, which is the Apollo Twin Duo, I think. The one with two processors. I think it retails for around 800 pounds, which is quite a lot of money, but it comes with unison preamps, which means you can emulate plugins, so preamps, compressors, EQs, with one millisecond, I think, of latency, which is awesome. Auto-tune as well on there works with one millisecond of latency, which is really, really useful, but the plugins are also top-notch. So that's why I use UAD. So we're going into UAD, into a 1076 preamp, which is a very, very classic style preamp, just to give it some analog warmth, almost. And also, I usually, not always but usually boost the top end of the signal at this point in the chain just a little bit on the the high shelf switch on the 1076 
After this, we're gonna go into an 1176 black face, which is gonna trim the tops of the transients off and level the signal out pretty heavily. Then we're gonna move into a CL1B, and this is gonna do the soft leveling that we usually talk about with optical compressors. This is gonna give us a really nice level signal to work with in Logic, and to be honest, at this point, it's, it's a pretty solid sounding pop vocal because we've done the two stages of compression I usually talk about and now we're just entering logic. So all the singers that I track with will track with these compressors usually on their voice and it gives them a really nice solid sound to track with and hopefully it gives them a better performance as well. So as soon as we hit logic, the first thing that the vocal is going to hit is auto-tune. So this is what it sounds like with auto-tune. When you speak the room goes quiet after auto-tune, we're going to low cut the vocal to about 150 hertz. Usually, especially in women's voices, there's not much useful information down there. In a man's voice, for sure, we're going to dial that low cut back, but we're going to get rid of as much low end as possible without sacrificing any quality in that vocal performance. This is what it sounds like with and without that low cut EQ. I'm staring so fixated by that look in your eyes and I know now I, I, I'm falling, falling. Then, controversially, I'm going to put a de -esser. That's before the rest of this chain. Remember, we've already EQ'd right at the start and we have had two bands of compression before we got to this point. So just a little bit of de here on a wide band setting, just to start to take off those S's and T sounds. We'll make sure that your vocal doesn't poke out and sound harsh at the end of the chain. This is what it sounds like with and without that fab filter de -esser. When you speak, the room goes quiet. I'm staring so fixated by that look in your eyes and I know now I... So now we get into the extra compressors. A lot of people are going to say this is too much compression for vocal or it's, uh, I, don't, I don't know, excessive. And to be honest, yeah, you're probably right, I don't need this many compressors on a vocal. But as I said at the beginning of the video, I very rarely use them all. And if I do use them all, they're doing very, very little work. I like the sound of layering compressors rather than having one doing more work. So first of all, we're going to use Arvox by Waves. It's got a threshold, I think, slider. You literally just slide it down to how much compression you want. And I'm aiming for like one, maybe two dB here. You just want to be seeing the top of the line go red. Okay, here's what it sounds like with Arvox turned on. When you speak, the room goes quiet. I'm staring so fixated by that look in your eyes and I know now I And then next we're gonna hit another 1176, another FET compressor. I've got the release set to 7 and the attack set to 6. That's a slower attack I'd usually have. The 76 goes so fast, it goes ludicrously fast. So having it set to 6 makes it a little bit smoother, a little bit less janky. And again, I'm taking off 1 or 2 dB here, just trimming those peaks off, making them nice and smooth. So this is what it sounds like with that 1176 turned on. When you speak, the room goes quiet. I'm staring so fixated by that look in your eyes. Following that, we're going to go into a CLA-3A. It's very similar to the LA-2A. I prefer the sound slightly. I think it adds a little bit more coloration, um, but in a nicer, more tasteful way. Here's what it sounds like with and without the LA-3A. When you speak, the room goes quiet. I'm staring so fixated by that look in your eyes and I know now I... After it's hit these two stages of compression, we're going to DS again. You might think this is going to over DS our signal, but actually we're only doing a little bit each time. I'm not slamming it. If you find your vocalist is sounding a little bit lispy because their S's are so compressed now, you can either remove the earlier DSer or just reduce the amount of DSing you're doing each stage. I like to DS before and after compression because I like the way that the compression brings out the S's after it's been de-S'd rather than like just clamping down on them when they're really harsh later. Is there some thing to do in multiple layers of compression but with multiple layers of de-S'ing? I haven't seen many people do that but I do think it sounds much better than just having the one doing all the work. Right this is what it sounds like with and without that second layer of de-S'ing. When you speak the room goes quiet I'm staring so fixated by that look in your eyes. And uh, finally or almost finally we're now going to hit that like sort of character EQ. Usually I'd use like a vintage EQ here, something to really color the signal. But because I've got all those sort of compression models on this specific vocal chain, I use the Fab Filter Q3 for this. It's a really transparent EQ and it gives you a lot of options in terms of making bands dynamic, uh, just monitoring specific bands. And I use this to trim out any really offensive frequencies after compression, but also to cut and boost frequencies that I really like to taste. Um, and then after this, it's just a noise gate and you're all done. 
Okay, and here's the vocal with and without that last layer of EQ, the Pro Q3. When you speak, the room goes quiet. I'm staring so fixated by that look in your eyes. So the feedback I got on this when I showed some of my mates was that it was excessive. There was too many compressors and that there were too many stages of things going on here. But when I run vocals through it, I think it sounds great. It doesn't sound over compressed unless I push the compressors too hard and tracking with the compression on means that I've got a very usable signal right out the gate and it usually means the vocalists perform better. I think it's sounding pretty good. On this specific vocal, it's probably sounding a little bit over compressed. I actually tracked this a long time ago, well over a year ago. I think I over compressed on the way in. That's completely my fault. I wouldn't do that now, but you know, you live and learn. Um, I often put a noise gate at the end of the chain just in case I want to trim any noise out quickly. Usually I'll delete that part when I'm actually processing the vocals manually and just manually cut out the sections where there's noise and do my own manual fades. I think that works a bit smoother, usually. Finally, just so you can hear what it sounds like with and without that vocal processing, here's the, uh, the vocal with and without the whole chain on, turning it on and off. When you speak, the room goes quiet. I'm staring so fixated by that look in your eyes And I know now I, I, I'm falling for Great, so hopefully you've now seen that it, it isn't kind of a one size fits all on vocal chains. Another vocal chain I use for a very specific artist uses plugins that aren't don't even feature in this at all. So it really does depend on the artist and the performance. But remember the key points are you want to EQ that signal when it goes in, then you want to compress it, probably with two compressors. Then you're going to want to DS your signal to make sure you're getting rid of those harsh sibilant sounds. And finally, just add another EQ to make sure it really slots into your track. Then you should be good. In another video, we're going to cover the buses that I use on my vocal because I use a lot of specific reverb buses and choruses to widen the vocal, make it sound a, a lot punchier as well, and really slot it into a mix. And often when singers say, like, I want more reverb, they don't always mean they want more reverb, they just want a different kind of reverb. So we're going to look into that in another video. But for now, hope you really enjoyed this one on vocal chains, or my vocal chain anyway. If you've got any questions, just ask them down in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, as I say, please subscribe if you're not already. Uh, and also, if you've got your own vocal chain that you think I should know about, please tell me down below because I'd love to chat about this and nerd out and, and learn how you guys are doing your vocals because we can always improve on our chains, right? Anyway, that's been it. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.